Say there, stranger, remember me? I'm that stranger that stalks your sanity. And today, right now, I'm wondering, oh, yeah, indeed, I am wondering, if you're wondering what kind of stranger I am exactly. Pleased to meet you. Won't you guess my name? But what's puzzling you, perhaps, is the nature of my game. No problem. I'll tell you exactly what the nature of my game is and why I call myself Stranger and why, wait for it, it is coming, why you yourself might also be some sort of stranger as well. Now, it is a very great fact known to very few people in this world that among the Nag Hammadi codices discovered in Egypt in December of 1945, there is one titled Allogenes. And in fact, I've written an extensive commentary on that document which is in Gnosis today, on Nemeta. Allogenes, what does it mean? It's a Greek word composed of two parts. Allo, meaning other or different, and genes, meaning of a certain genetic strain or generated from a certain genetic strain. So by strict definition from the term allogenes, which was a term of a, a self-identification for the initiates of the mystery schools, it means someone of another strain. But another strain of what? Now bear with me for a moment while I uh, break down this word more closely you find the prefix allo in such words as allopathic medicine. What is that? Well, that is medicine coming from the pharmaceutical masterminds around the world, the uh, voodoo masters in white coats, which uses something other than the cause of an ailment or disease to cure it. That's called allopathic medicine, by contrast to homeopathic medicine. Homeopathic medicine is a method of using that which causes or provokes or incites the disease in order to cure it. And one thing never to be forgotten is the brilliant meme from Paracelsus. The cure is in the dose so, homeopathic medicine, you may or may not know, uses a process called trituration. And so it takes a substance, for instance, part of the body of a tarantula, or the substance of the leaves of a chamomile plant. It puts them into a liquid solution, and it triturates it. The homeopath who creates these medicines not only uses them, takes a substance and a minute amount of a substance that has been identified as related to a condition of illness or disease, dis-ease, and puts that substance into water and triturates it. And trituration is a process of distillation. And this distillation can go very, very high it can be 6x, 12x, 20x, 30x. The higher the x, the higher the trituration. And the higher the trituration, the less of the material substance in the original formula remains. So in fact, when you take a homeopathic dose, say of a plant, such as rose hips or foxglove, there is, in fact, 
no detectable chemical trace of the plant left in the homeopathic dose. Similarly, consider hatred. Hatred is a problem in the world. There's a lot of hatred directed towards certain people today, mainly white heterosexual males, of which I am one. So I'm not talking about what I hate or who I hate and the reasons why. It's obvious in the mainstream narrative that hatred toward me and those of my kind is acceptable and widely promoted. So how do I deal with that? Well, the cure is in the dose. I take some of that hatred, a minute amount, I triturate it into a homeopathic dose. And I use that not only to make myself immune to the hatred coming toward me, but according to certain procedures which are only known to master sorcerers, I can also use that dose against those who hate me. So homeopathic medicine works in that way, but allopathic medicine does not. So allo means other or other than. So what is other than about the allogenies? Well, quite simply, directly from the etymology, it means that the stranger is other than others, other than those who are not the stranger. The stranger, ladies and gentlemen, is a new breed. It's a new iteration, a novel iteration of the human species. It is what can be called technically an epigenetic mutation. Now, here's where the fun really starts. And if you're not having fun yet, and you're not ready to have some really exceptional fun, then you can fuck off and go finger fuck your iPhone. But if you're willing to listen to me for a few more minutes, I will explain, because that is the sorcerer's disease, the compulsion to explain, exactly what kind of epigenetic mutation that I'm talking about. To do so, I will refer to the master narrative of the fallen goddess scenario. And this scenario describes the creation of the human genome, which is called Anthropos in those texts. The Anthropos. The Anthropos is the human genome and the cosmology of the fallen goddess scenario describes how the anthropos is a product of divine genius. Two aeons, two gods, two supernatural living entities in the galactic core designed the human genome. And then they projected that out into the limbs of the galaxy so that it became embedded in a molecular cloud in the Orion Nebula, known as M42. So the Orion Nebula, which is known by astronomers to be a cradle of star birth, is also the cradle of the human genome. And from that locale, the propagules, as they are called, they're sort of like freeze-dried fragments, freeze-dried flakes of the human genome encapsulated in heavy water, were carried out into the galactic arms by plasmic currents straining or filtering through the Orion Nebula. All of this is astronomically verifiable. And as a result, from the master template of the genome, 
There were nine occasions when the Anthropos, which you call humanity, the human species, seeded in different planetary systems, Earth-like systems, but not the Earth system itself. And so there were nine experiments in planetary laboratories with this genomic plasmid. And we, living on Earth today, are the tenth experiment, hence the designation A-10. So, so to be precise, and you have to get this precisely to get it at all, all of the specimens of the human animal of all races that you see on the Earth today and that have been on the Earth since the Earth appeared in the galactic arms are variations of the tenth strain of the anthropic genome embedded in the Orion Nebula. And this is all factual. It's Gnostic intel, but it is astronomically and biologically sound and can be proven and has already been proven in various ways and in various instances. Fine. So what about A10? The experiment in the planetary laboratory in which you are currently living. Well, the setting and circumstances of A10 are completely different from the previous nine experiences with the very same genomic substance. They are different primarily because of two reasons, two monumental factors in the cosmic design of our world. First difference is that the planet which provides the habitat for A10 since its emergence in the prehistory of prehistory is actually the embodiment of the mother of the genome. So she, the Aeon Sophia, is Mother Nature and the Earth is her body, but more precisely to under, understood to be like the dream body that you have when you act in a dream. It is material, physical, composed of all the elements of nature, earth, air, fire, water, composed of all the elements of the biosphere, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, it is materially real, and that ensemble is the body of the divine, supernatural, galactic-scale goddess who devised the human genome in the first place. That was not the case with any of the other nine previous experiments. The other monumental and anomalous condition of this experiment with A10 is that it has been from an early stage the target of extraneous and extra biological entities called archons. And these archons do not arise from some other civilization somewhere else in the galaxy. They are not some like advanced species that came in and hacked the human genome and created uh, genetic experiments with humanity. No, no, no. All that is misinformation, misdirection, and disinformation. They are, in fact, an alien, cyborg-type, exobiological species that exists exclusively within our solar system but not within the sphere of the Earth, Sun, Moon, Trinity. The Archons cannot invade the Earth, because they cannot inhabit the Earth, because oxygen is toxic to them. But they do attempt, using HAL, or virtual reality, to simulate an invasion 
into the atmosphere and into the very psyches of living human animals today. And these, in, these are called close encounters or alien abductions. They are comparable to the kind of experience that you would have if you put on a VR headset as proposed by Mr. Zuckerberg of Meta. And so with such a headset, you could simulate a hike in the Himalayas. You could simulate surfboarding off the coast of Malibu. Who knows, you could even simulate an evening with a Ukrainian hooker. Alien abductions are induced simulations of this type, of this type, due to the power of the archons, which is called how, or virtual reality, virtual replication. Now in that specific instance, the Gnostic intel warned you about the true nature of this much discussed subject of alien intrusion. Now I've talked on this subject extensively and written about it extensively, but I know no better reference to begin than the words of Carlos Castaneda in Magical Passes. And once you have heard this, you cannot unhear it. Quote, Human beings are on a journey of awareness which has been momentarily interrupted by extraneous forces, end quote. What are those extraneous forces? There's no mystery about it. You don't have to go down rabbi holes for the rest of your life. You don't have to be perplexed and baffled about the E-T-U-F-O enigma. If you read not in his image, it lays it out in no uncertain terms. So the intrusion of the archons is an anomalous event. In this current experiment, the 10th experiment, with A10, and also the fact that the Aeonic Mother, your Divine Mother, who designed the DNA code of your genomic identity, is also present to you directly in the presence of nature. These are the two outstanding points one learns from the sacred narrative of the mysteries. But hold on, hold on. It gets so much better. Because, and precisely because, humanity in the world today, on the planet today, is faced with the problem of the intrusion of the archons, not only in their exobiological form, as a cyborg species, but also through their proxies, through their agents, through the archontified human animals all around you. And not only does that challenge stand before you uniquely, but the opportunity to overcome that challenge is also unique and is totally unprecedented in the whole history, in the entire history of our species. What is that opportunity? It is the opportunity to mutate to a higher iteration. This is called, in Gnostic terms, the mutation of A11. Now, normally, may sound strange to use that word normally, but there are protocols and there are uh, rules and guidelines for a divine experiment in a planetary laboratory. And normally, in the routine run of affairs, a particular strain of the human species will play itself out in a single experiment. 
So each of those nine preceding strains played out in the unique conditions of the nine planetary laboratories where they emerged. You are now living in a planetary laboratory which is unlike the nine previous ones. So the conditions for the evolution, if you want to use that accursed word, of A10 are completely different. And in fact, a deep study of the Gnostic intel from the past combined with the practice of Gnosis today leads directly to a stunning moment of self-knowledge. Not only your self-knowledge as an individual person, but your self-knowledge as a member of the human species. And what is that unique and outstanding factor of self-knowledge? Simply that you have the opportunity to mutate to a higher iteration. You have the opportunity to become other than a 10, to become allogenes, an other generated type of human animal. Now, I guess I said this was going to be fun. Uh, does it sound like fun? Does the idea that you can mutate, that you can undertake an epigenetic rewrite of your own DNA to turn you into something other than what you see around you as the so-called human population of the planet. Well, you can bet your booty that's true. And you can bet your booty you might be able to do it if you have the capacity to understand my words and the proof that you can do it is simple. It's been done. And I myself, although not I alone, are an example of the higher mutation of A10 into A11. And the technical term for this, so one of the technical terms that I now have the pleasure to introduce to you is transspeciation. This is where the fun starts. Can you see where I'm going? You know, as far as I can tell, I mean, I have no social life. I live practically in total retreat. Goddess knows where I get my information from about what's happening in the world at large and the events in the world, drama, etc. But I do seem to detect that there's a hell of a lot of blowback against things that have been forced down the throat of humanity for some time now. For example, the trans agenda. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. I'm joining the trans agenda. I'm coming out and saying in public right now, on June 3rd, 2024, that I am a trans You can say a trans -speed. So you don't say you're a tranny. You say you're a trans -speed. That would be a way to declare, hey, just for the fun of it. It gets into serious territory, but just for the fun of it. That would be a way to say, you can't treat me and address me like I am an ordinary, normal, human animal of A10. Because I am A11. I am a trans-speciating human animal. I am developing, emerging, evolving into a higher iteration of A10. And I am leaving A10 
behind. And I consider everyone who is a 10 not to be me, to be other than me. And so I am allogenes. I am the other generated version of humanity speaking to you as living evidence of something astonishingly remarkable and beautiful and provable. So in conclusion, I want to caution you that you can't just go out to your job or to the local cafe or to a uh, park and start declaring to anyone that you are the transpecient emergence of a new strain of the anthropine genome. I'll give it a try and see how it plays. But you see, it's not as easy as that. There are very rigorous criteria for identifying as allogenies. Now, I've described some of these criteria here and there on Nemeda. And one thing that I pointed out that might be of use to you is that in the works of D.H. Lawrence, the uh, British novelist, you find the criteria and standards for A11. These are rigorous standards, and unless you meet these standards, you would be faking it. You would be another fake and gay, pathetic A10 leftover if you pretended to be A11 without proving it. You can't know that it's real until you yourself are the evidence that it's real. Enough said. And of course, I'll be seeing you in the beauty of A11, which is the beauty that kills.